Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives. The only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening. And now, enjoy the show. CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... to Carol when she first came. She got to love them. Uh, we were all sad when she left. On a Friday? Unlucky Friday? How did you know? I've heard all the gossip. I've heard about Gareth, too. They told you about him? Why are you trembling, Frida? You, you have seen him? No. He used to work here, I understand. But you asked me if I'd seen him. I thought you and I were the only employees in this house. Why oh, did I? I don't know what I meant by that. I, I, I must go. I must take care of the children. Don't ask me any more. <laughs> Mystery drama, Circle of Evil, was written especially for Mystery Theater by Sidney Sloan and stars Marion Seldes and Christopher Tabori. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Time Magazine. I'll be back shortly with Act One. taxi had deposited her in front of Greystone Manor that dark, cold, rainy day in late autumn, Mary Richards almost changed her mind and called the taxi back to return her to the station. There was something ominous about the big, ugly Victorian house. It was too much like the illustrations she remembered from the gruesome fairy tales of her childhood. When she had dragged her heavy suitcases to the top of the stone steps, she stopped. She was suddenly gripped by a nameless fear, a crippling fear of the unknown. However, after a moment, she made her way to the large oak door and rang the bell. Yes? I'm Mary Richards. Oh, yes, yes, of course. You must be the new governess. I'm Frida, Frida Kurtz. I'm the housekeeper. Oh, come in. Come in out of the rain. Uh, let me take your suitcase. Oh, th thank you. I can manage. Now, follow me. Your room is back here, down this hall. See, the children's quarters are on the second floor. All the help have their quarters down here. Oh, are there many children? <laughs> it's funny the way I said that, help. You and I are the only help in this old house. Really? But the house is so large. Oh, we only use a small part of it. The rest is closed off. Used to be a big family living here. Big. Ten people all the time. Sometimes as many as 15, 16. Oh, they're all away? They're all dead. At least, most of them. What? All the grown-ups, except Mr. Dykeman. William Dykeman. And then there are the two children, Andrea and Alex. Uh, you're to take care of them. Oh, yes. Mr. Dykeman interviewed me at the agency in New York for the job. He's Andrea and Alex's guardian. He's their uncle. Uh, didn't he say anything about this place? What you were to do? Uh, no. Uh, just that I was to look after the children. 
supervise their education until they would be ready for something more formal, until they'd be old enough to go away to school. Old enough? How old did he say they were, Andrea and Alex? He didn't say. I gather they must be quite young. Five, six. Oh, dear. You're in for a surprise. Surprise? Andrea is 18. Alex is 20. So you're the new nanny, are you? <laughs> I wonder if you're going to like it here. Oh, I think Oh, shut I'm... up, Alex. You mustn't mind him, Miss Richards. He's always like this at first. I like to play games. Don't you, nanny? Hide and seek, that's my favorite. In this house, there are so many good places to hide. You'd never be found till it was too late. Alex, stop it. Now stop it, please. I'll stop. I'll stop it for good. That'll make you happy. Bye, Andrea. <laughs> Bye, Nanny. Oh, please forgive him. He's not always rude, Miss Richards. You'll get to like him in time. In time? Well, Carol Wicker did. At first, she hated Carol him. Carol Wicker? Well, she was the governess before you. She left? You might say that, Miss Richards. Look, um, may I call you Mary? It sounds so formal to call you Miss Richards. Oh, of course. Now, this Miss Wicker, how long did she stay? Oh, nearly two years. One year and 11 months. She left on a Friday. I always feel Fridays are unlucky, don't you, Mary? Well, no, not necessarily. Oh, Carol hated them. She would weep in her room on Fridays. What? Oh, not for the first few months. But later, she would weep in her room. She was in love. And he... Andrea, I wonder if you would mind uh, changing the subject. Oh, oh, of course, Mary. I, I didn't know. I didn't think that... Didn't think what? That you had met him. I don't know what you're talking about. Gareth. Gareth Norway. Oh, he's very handsome. And she was very much in love with him. He has a way with the Please, ladies. Andrea, I do not wish to continue this. I oh? do. So you've met him too? No, I haven't met him, and I don't wish to discuss this further. You'll meet him, Mary. You'll meet him. Yes? We're having supper up in the playroom. Wouldn't you like to come up and eat with the children? Come in, Mrs. Kurtz. I want to talk to you. Oh, you haven't unpacked yet. Do you want me to help you? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, I've decided that this job isn't exactly what I'd contracted for. You're leaving. Yes. I'm afraid this is more than I can handle. Mr. Dykeman gave me to understand that I'd be working with children. They are children. No. They are two young people who need attention, who seem to need psychiatric help, and I am not qualified for the job. I've placed a call to Mr. Dykeman in New York. Oh, yes, yes, I know. It's that crazy act they're putting on for you. Act? Sure. It's to test you, to tease you. It's only a joke. They did that to Carol when she first came, and she got to love them. We were all sad when she left. On a Friday? Unlucky Friday? Oh, yes. How did you know? I've had all the gossip. I've heard about Gareth, too. I told you about him? Yes. Why are you trembling? Ha have you seen him? No. Does he work here? He used to. He was the chauffeur. Used to work here. But you asked me if I'd seen him. Oh, did I? I, I don't know what I meant by that. I'm... I, I must go and have my supper now. They, they're waiting. Mrs. Kurt, wait. What? Hello, Mr. Dykeman, please. Mary Richards calling. What? Well, when will he be back? He... Well, how can he be reached? I'm the governess. I, I mean, he hired me recently to take care of his niece and his nephew, and I... No, no, no. It's nothing to do with a salary. That's quite satisfactory. It's just that... When may I expect to hear from him? Well, if he doesn't call, I shall leave Greystone Manor on the 31st. That's two weeks and three days. Who's there? 
It's Alex Merritt. Yes, Alex? May I come in? Come in. You've locked yourself away from us here in your room. We haven't seen you for the last two days. Yes. Haven't you been well? Nothing wrong with my health. Well, I hate to bring this up, but aren't you our governess? Shouldn't you be teaching us something? Something useful? Well, that's what you're being paid for. Alex, if we're going to speak to each other at all, you'll have to drop this snide manner. Snide? Whatever do you mean? You are not a child. Neither is your sister, so stop this childish teasing. I shall only be here till the end of the month. You're... Le you're leaving us? I accepted this job as a governess to take care of and teach young children. That's what I'm qualified to do. I'm not qualified to... Say it. Go on, Mary, say it. You think I'm mad, don't you? You think Andrew is too, don't you? I think... My uncle does too. That's why he keeps us here, away from the world. Why he hires governesses for us to take care of us. Why does he? Because he can't let the story come out. Too unsettling. Impossible. Scandalous. He's ashamed of us. I don't understand. Perhaps it's better that you don't. Alex? Alex, where are you? Oh, that's Frida. She's looking for me. Well, open the door and tell her where you are. Oh, no, no. Well, I will then. Mrs. Curtsy's here. In here with me. Oh, there you are, you naughty boy. Hiding from Frida. Now, come. We're having tea upstairs in the nursery. And I've baked your favorite. Apple kuchen. No, I, I don't want any. I want to stay and talk with Mary. I've got things to explain to her. No. You come. I won't come. Don't force him if he doesn't want to. You stay out of this, miss. When I tell him to do something, he must do it. But I'm... And you are nothing here. I know all about your calling, Mr. Dykeman. Wanting to quit your job here, I know. I told you I was going to call. I wasn't concealing it. But he didn't speak with you, did he? Mr. Dykeman called me. Told me what to do. Well, why didn't he answer my call to him? Because he wanted to talk to you in person. He's coming here to talk. And you will stay here until he comes. house doesn't look so gloomy when the sun is shining, does it? Oh, oh Andre, I thought I was alone out here. You're very unhappy here, aren't you? Oh, uncomfortable is closer to it. It's just that everything is so strange, so uncertain. Like living in a dream? Yes. Yes, like a dream, but not a very pleasant one. You'll be going soon? Ten days. I'm sorry. You can help us. Help you? Oh, Alex knows that, too. We want you to stay. Oh, that's very flattering, Andrea, but I can't possibly help you. I don't even know what kind of help you need. We can tell you. Show you. We need your strength. Please say you'll stay. I'm only staying till the end of the month. End of the month. Well, then, that'll have to do. That'll be long enough. Tonight, we will show you what we mean. Hello? Yes? Did I wake you, Mary? No, I was reading. I wasn't asleep. Please come to the large drawing room on the third floor as soon as you can. What is it? I, I can't tell you over the house phone. Please. Very well. It'll take me a few minutes to dress. No, just put on your robe. Come now, please. I'll come right up. Andrea? Andrea? Strange, this is the room. Andrea? Perhaps she meant the room at the end of the hall. No, Mary. She meant this one. What? Who, who are you? I, I can't see you in the dark. Don't be frightened, Mary. You know me? They've told me about you. You're beautiful. Mary? Mary? Where are 
are you? Here, Andrea. Oh, I was afraid you'd gone to the wrong place. No. Um, aren't there any lights in this room? Oh, there used to be, but uh, the mice nibbled the wires, Alex says, and they don't work. I, I have a flashlight. Light it. Here. That's very strange. What? A moment ago, I spoke to a man in the dark. A man whose name you mentioned to me, uh, Gareth? G- Gareth Norway. He was here. Where is he? He left very suddenly. You told me about him. A chauffeur, wasn't he? Oh, many years ago. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Flash your light here on the floor. <gasps> oh, no footprints. No. The dust is heavy on the floor, and your footprints are plainly marked, as are mine. But none for Gareth. None. The dead do not leave footprints, Mary. I want an answer. I must have an answer. Just accept what you see, what you hear. Dead. He's been dead for nearly 15 years. Dead. And yet... Not dead. Well, what sort of nonsense is this? It is not nonsense. You spoke with him. What are you trying to do to me? <laughs> I don't believe in spirits and ghosts and the supernatural. It was some sort of trick, wasn't it? Tell me the truth. Believe this. Garrett is here. Possibly right in this room. No, I don't believe you. It's all in your mind. It's some morbid story that somebody told you when you were children. If this house frightens you and depresses you, why don't you run away from it? You don't have to stay. But we do. What? We cannot leave. He won't let us leave. He holds us. He keeps us here. It is part of his revenge. Revenge? Do you expect me to believe... Revenge for his murder. He says he was murdered. And he will not stop until all of us... All of our blood are dead. Already, Mary Richards had fallen under the spell of the old house. She was beginning to believe the unbelievable. Had she really spoken to the spirit of Gareth Nordway? Or was this just a frightening thought conjured up by the strange young people who inhabit Greystone Manor? Perhaps we will find some of the answers in Act Two. searched for an explanation of the events which had occurred, but which she, with her logical mind, could not accept. She waited impatiently for the arrival of William Dykeman, hoping that he could answer the questions to which she could find no answers. His first words were very reassuring. I've come out here for one reason, Miss Richards, and one reason only, and... That is, to put these stupid superstitions to rest once and for all. You don't believe them, Mr. Dyson? Oh, definitely not. They're rubbish. The product of idle minds. Childish nonsense. But I have seen him. Seen Gareth Nordway. You have been made to believe that you have seen him. Miss Richards, it must have occurred to you that Andrea and Alex are... Well, how shall I say? Not quite normal. Well, their behavior is somewhat bizarre. <laughs> Strange, Just but... pranks, childish pranks. Nothing serious, however, wouldn't you say? But I'm not competent to judge. I'd say that it was more than childish pranks. Frida told me that almost the entire family died in a rather mysterious fashion. Almost all at the same time. She seemed to hint there was something supernatural behind it all. All that? Well, one can hardly call a serious epidemic of flu supernatural. We lost... Eight. No. No, nine members of our family. It was a terrible tragedy. Altogether in this house, we must have passed the virus to each other. Terrible thing to happen to a family. Alex and Andrea were little more than infants at the time. It it very definitely affected them. I see. <laughs> By your tone, I... I can see you don't believe me. If the two children were affected by this tragedy, if indeed it twisted their minds, why wasn't something more constructive done for them? Why, Miss Richards, Why weren't they given a psychiatric help? 
Why were they kept here virtually prisoners instead of being taken to a more healthful place? I... I find it difficult to answer that. Why? Because you are responsible for keeping them here? In a way, yes. Well, what do you have to gain from all of this? Well, now, really, Miss Richards, I cannot tolerate this interrogation from a... A hired servant. Don't let that disturb you, Mr. Dykeman. I'm quitting this job as of the 31st. There is nothing that could induce me to stay on any longer. Good day. Wait. I have nothing more to say to you, Mr. Dykeman. But you do intend to speak to... to others. Yes. There's something hidden here that that's festering like an infected wound. Something that needs the light of day. If you mean that you intend to go to the police or force some sort of investigation... I shall certainly do something of that sort. Well, then let me warn you, you can be stopped very effectively. Are you threatening me? Threatening? Oh, no, I wouldn't think of it. But I must, in your own interest, prevent you from causing yourself hardship. Yes, and perhaps even... Injury. Yes? It's Andrea. May I come in? Yes, of course. I, I don't want to bother you. Come in, come in. I'm just reading. Is something troubling you? You look upset. I am. My uncle called earlier and spoke to Frida. He's hired another governor. <laughs> that was to be expected since I am leaving at the end of the month. No. You are leaving Friday. You haven't been told yet. That's the day she is arriving. Oh, if only Alex and I could go with you. Well, why can't you? You know why. No, I don't. Andrea, who does all this belong to? You mean this house? All oh, the house, the grounds, the money, the entire estate. Oh, to Alex and me. And your uncle? Well, oh, he's our guardian. Oh, he manages the estate. Until we're of age. 21, specifically. Alex will be 21 in seven months, and well, I've got nearly two and a half years to go. And when that time comes, when you and Alex finally come into your money, uncle will find himself in somewhat reduced circumstances. But it never was his money. He controlled it. He used it. For us. I wonder. Mary. Mary, listen to me. I must speak to you, Mary. Who is it? Mary, listen to me. Who's there? Who is it? Don't be frightened. Oh, no. I said don't scream. I'll let you speak if you promise not to scream again. Promise. Yeah. Good. Who are you? We have met before. Spoken before. Oh, yes, that voice. I remember Gareth. Gareth Nordway. I've seen you so many times. When you didn't know I was there. What do you want? I'm going to tell you something. And I want your help. Help? How can I help you? To right a wrong. A wrong done me many years ago. This, this is all a dream. This... I was a servant here. A chauffeur. A lonely unknown. No family, no. Cynthia was 18. Beautiful. A member of the rich and snobbish Dykeman clan. But she didn't see me as the dirty stable boy. That's what William called me when he found out she loved me. And I loved her. Well, we ran away. And we were married for one ecstatic month. We hid while they searched for us. When they found us, Cynthia was dragged back here. And no one was planned. Then I came back. And my blood reddened the 
white dress of my beloved was her scream, piercing, hopeless. Then you are... Yes, I am dead. that something was being concealed. You will but search I... it out. Now you know. And you will. No. No. This is a dream. It's a dream. It's not happening. I'm asleep and it's only a dream. Again, Mary. Oh, oh, Alex, what are you doing in the garage? I, I hope you don't mind if I use your bike. Not at all, since it's not mine. I've got another bike. Mind if I come along? Well, I, uh, I wasn't exactly going just for a ride. Going into the village, then? Alex, I had a strange dream last night. It was Gareth, wasn't it? However, did you know? It's his way. He's working on you. He told you a story, didn't he? Yes. Tragic. I almost wept for him. Oh, he's won you over, Mary. The way he won Carol over. He wants your help. He'll try to use you. Listen to me, Mary. Gareth can be very persuasive when he wants to be. He can make you believe the most ridiculous things. I don't want to hear any more about Gareth. Let me tell you the true story. Or at least the official version of the tragedy. I don't want to hear it. You better listen. Cynthia was attracted to Gareth, Norway. Everyone knows that. She flirted with him, some say. Whatever it was, it wasn't love. Not on her part. Gareth kept after her, and finally... They ran away together? They married? No. He tried to get her to go away with him. She refused. He got angry, wild. He kidnapped her. Uncle William chased them, found them. Gareth drew his knife. Uncle William shot him. That's how it was? That's the way the police got the story. It was called self-defense. Case was dismissed. And Cynthia? He killed her. Or as the story goes, the first shot wounded him. But he was able to stab her with his knife. Uncle William fired at him again. I believed him. I believed Gareth. Carol Wicker believed him. And committed suicide. No. But I heard she did not kill herself. She was murdered. Deeper and deeper, Mary Richards plunges into the morass of claims and counterclaims. The circle of evil that surrounds the old gray house is being drawn tighter and tighter around the lives of all who dwell there. As though fighting up to the surface of a stagnant pool that threatens to suffocate her with its vile and rotting weeds, Mary reaches out for help. I'll be back in a moment with Act Three. Mary Richards' sleep that night was filled with frightening dreams. Dreams of frustration in which she could not fight or defend herself from unknown and unnamed forces. She found herself slipping into a deep abyss, the sides of which afforded not the slightest foothold. Her fingers, clutching at the slimy walls, could grasp nothing. The next morning, clear and sunny, brought with it the resolution to take positive action, to reach out to the sane world outside for help. Hello, County Coroner's Office, Mr. Lascombe. My name is Mary Richards. I'm inquiring about the late Carol Wicker. Uh, no, I'm not a relative. Let's say that I'm a friend. Was a friend. Yes. Now, I've read your report on her death. I got the transcript from the Bureau of Records. Well, 
I'm just a bit confused. Your original opinion was that she might have been struck with a club or some other blunt instrument. But your final opinion was that her death was caused by an overdose of sleeping pills. Well, I was just wondering why you changed your mind. New evidence. What new evidence? That she had been upset, melancholy, despondent. Well, who gave you that evidence? Oh, I see. Well, the reason for this call is to ask, how does one go about getting permission to exhume a body? I'm not so sure you're doing the right thing, Mary. After all, Carol was in a bad state of mind, unhappy, depressed. And she knew something, something which might prove embarrassing. It was your Uncle William who supplied the information that changed the coroner's opinion. Don't you find that interesting? I do. You're jumping to conclusions, Mary. Am I? All you know has been told to you, and you believe what you've been told. Mary, we don't know what we believe anymore. Well, where did you get your version of what happened to Carol Wicker? Frida told us. And who does Frida work for? Frida works for me, Miss Richards. Mr. Dykeman. Well, 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 children. Now, are you going to greet Uncle William? Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Uncle William. Uncle William. Well, that's nice. But now, would you mind leaving the room? I should like to speak to Miss Richards in private. Anything you have to say had better be said in the presence of witnesses. Witnesses? <laughs> children? And I think you better stop referring to them as children. Oh, well, very well. They may stay. Now, uh... Uh, may I ask the purpose of your call to the county coroner? <laughs> I see the news of my call was relayed to you very quickly. Well, you think it's strange that Mr. Lascombe would call me? No, not strange at all. I rather expected that he would. I, um... I would like to dissuade you from your purpose. I think nothing will be gained by digging up the remains of poor Carol Wicker. You can't change my mind. I had the exhumation order. And I have only to order the men from the cemetery. Oh, yes, yes, I know. And I see you're not going to listen to me. So I'm going to make matters easier for you. I have ordered the men, the grave diggers, to be there tomorrow night at nine. Good. The remains will be delivered to the coroner for re-examination. I would prefer that the examination be made by a doctor of my choosing. Well, of course, but until you have engaged a man, the body will be sent to the county morgue. That is a state law. I have no control over them. Thank you. You've been very helpful. But don't mention it, Miss Richards. Anything to keep you and the children entertained? Is that you, Alex? Yes, Andrea. Where have you been? Upstairs, in the old part of the house. Looking for him? I thought he wouldn't speak to us. Are you certain that he can? That he... Are you beginning to have doubts? I don't know. Uncle William is going to have us committed. I heard him speaking with Frida. He said he'd had enough trouble. He doesn't care if the entire matter comes out. We're going to be locked up. Treated as though we're insane. Isn't it possible, Alex, that we are? No. No, we're just frightened. Afraid. Don't tell me that Gareth is just something I imagined. You've seen him, too. Spoke with him as I have? Yes, Alex. Carol saw him? Spoke with him? Mary, too. Isn't it possible that we, you and I, have conjured him up? Perhaps he's nowhere but in our minds. No. No, I'm not that mad. I'll not believe that. He can't lock me up. I'll... What is this? Still up? It's long past your bedtime. Now go to your room at once, children, or I will punish you both. Yes, Frida. We're going right now. Aren't we, Andrea? You rang for me, Mr. Dykeman. Oh, yes, Mrs. Coates. I just wanted to tell you what my plans are as they concern you and your future. Future? Well, you'll be well taken care of. I'm settling a substantial sum on you, a sort of a annuity. You're letting me go? Well, let us say that I'm retiring you. Oh, but... But this is so unexpected. It's so sudden. Mrs. Coates, as you know, the welfare of the children has been my prime consideration for many years. But I can take care of them. I can watch them. Of course, I'm not criticizing you. It's just that I have decided we can't do it any longer on this level. 
They are grown people now, no longer children. When am I to leave? Well, there's my car waiting in the driveway. If you hurry, we... We'll be able to have you catch the 11.20 train at the station. Uh, yes, tonight. So soon. Yes, I, I, I will go. I will be ready. But first, I say goodbye to my children. Uh, no. Under no circumstances are you to let them know that you're going. <laughs> it would be very bad for them. Oh, yes. Yes, I, I will do as you say. Uh, a little after nine, I think. Twenty after nine. I checked my watch before we left. Andrea, do you know the man driving? No. But Uncle William said he would send a car for us. Probably some man from the village. I can't speak to him. He didn't give me much of an answer. Just mumbled something about driving us to the cemetery. Is it very far from the house? Oh, that's it. Just up ahead. Oh, this is it. We'll have to walk from here. Oh, driver, will you wait for us here? Follow me. I know where it is. Alex, don't run ahead. Wait for us. Come on. It isn't too far. I don't like being in your mirror. Neither do I. Oh, I, I, oh, I recognize the area now. Gee, this is just like my family car. Carol was buried just, just a bad. Andrea. Mary, come quickly. Hurry. Come on, don't frighten. We're coming, Alex. Oh. Oh. It's empty. The grave is empty. It was dug up. And the body removed. Oh, it's obvious that your Uncle William never intended to go through with the re-examination. But he never tried to block you. Or at least he said he never would. Why did he go through this whole business of digging up the body? And bringing us here to see what he had done. The car. The car had drawn us here. It's leaving. Stop. Wait. Stop. Hold your breath, Alex. He won't stop. How are we to get back? You might ask that question of your Uncle William. Why, oh, yes. That's an excellent suggestion, Miss Richards. But we must hurry. There isn't too much time left. Why did you take the body of Carol Wicker from her grave? I had two reasons, dearest nephew. One, I didn't want the body re-examined for obvious reasons. It really was murder, then. Not suicide, as the coroner's report said. Oh, my dear niece, you have an absolute genius for the obvious. Yes, the report is in error. Carol Wicker was murdered by you. As you have suspected for some time. Why did you kill poor Carol? She snooped around and snooped around. Until she came upon the truth. That your story of how Gareth died was a lie. Yes, I shot him down. I killed him. I don't believe in giving a rabid dog a chance to bite. You brought us here to make a confession of your crime? I brought you here, Miss Richards, to tie up all the loose ends neatly. You're all going to die right here. No. No. Oh, well, you couldn't. Why, us? Why, what have we done to you? You stand in my way. The Dugman money will be mine. You can't. You'll be discovered. By whom? There'll be no witnesses. No one will investigate your disappearance. Get it. Help us. Help us. He is your murderer. He's here. Oh, keep calling if you think it will do you any good. Gareth Nordway is dead and buried. He cannot help you. You wanted revenge. Here he is. The man who killed you. All right. Line up now. Line up as I'm telling you. Gareth. Gareth, come now. I shall have to teach you then where you'll stand and drag your bodies into the pit if you... Gareth, come. Face your enemy. Gareth, you see, Miss Richards, they are stunted human beings, as I said. Wouldn't it be better to end it all and let them find peace? Poor mad creatures. You are the madman. Perhaps. But I control the situation, and it shall be as I want it to be. You will all be dead and silent, and no one will be the wiser. No. No, no, please, please. No, no. I will stop you. I must stop Stand you. Stand back, will you? I've got the gun. I've got it. Oh, you. You. You shot me. I. I. I'm. Quick. No. It's fallen. He's shot. Alex. Alex. Oh. Did. Did I stop him? Uh, uh. Yes, Alex. 
look, he's dead. Garris! Garris, why didn't you help me? I, I did it. I was able to do it. I had to let you become a man, Alex. Then, have I, Garris? Have I become a man? Why doesn't he answer me? He doesn't have to. You've proven yourself out. You know the answer. I just checked with the ticket agent. The train's on time. I'm almost sorry. I hate to see you leaving. I must. And you'll be all right now, Andrew. Oh, are you sure you won't reconsider and come back to the city with me? No. I've definitely decided to stay in the old house. So many memories. Well, if you ever change your mind, you know where and how to reach me. I know. The old house will be different now. It's very different. The gloom seems to have lifted and everything seems brighter. It's only Alex. Yeah. You promised not to dwell on that. Yes, I, I'll keep my promise. But I wanted to say that I'm... I'm so proud. Yes, that's the word. So proud of him. He worried that he was weak and ineffectual. But when the time came to be strong, he met the test. I have a feeling. I know. That if I stay in Greystone, I will see him again. He'll be there always. As the train began slowly pulling out of the station, Mary Richards could see the lonely figure of a young girl standing wistfully looking after the departing train. Then she saw Andrea turn and make her way back to the old station taxi. Get in and start to Greystone Manor. Empty now of all but its ghosts. I'll be back shortly. What is real and what is unreal? It's a question which has troubled man since he began to reason. Some say the answer can be found in our primeval fear of the dark, a carryover from our early days on this earth. There are others who believe that there are forces beyond our comprehension, forces which control us, guide us into good or evil. What do you think? Our cast included Marion Felder, Christopher Sabori, Mary Jane Higby, Rosemary Wright, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Are you telling me, Mr. Starrett, that in the show business, in that future time you claimed to visit... I did visit there. I was there. The actors actually died? They actually did whatever you saw them do, Doctor. They were eaten by sharks, by wild animals. They drowned, they starved. They died in the operating room. Whatever the story called for. There must have been many dead actors. You think of all those shows, I would say easily a hundred will be killed each week. But where did they find so many actors? Well, they weren't really actors. They were just convicts. Convicts? Well, what I mean is, Doctor, they were convicted of crime. <laughs> Serious crimes must have been very prevalent in that uh, future world. Serious? Anything was serious. You said something bad about your superior, that was serious. You, you had it. You were in showbiz. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Time Magazine and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant... Dream. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can 
also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian McCarthy in the YouTube search.